happy with resonance chemistry now let's continue our lectures on organometallic chemistry so today i am going to discuss with a uh, ir spectroscopy of uh, the topic is ir spectroscopy of metal carbonyls so this is very very important topic uh, in the perspective of uh, csar net as well as gate and iit java exams okay so this is very important lecture that is nothing but uh, ir spectroscopy so simply ir spectros of metal carbonyls simply metal carbonyls okay so now in generally co it follows the unsymmetrical molecular orbital diagram so that is that means uh, so carbon and oxygen it follows like this this kind of molecular orbital diagram okay so this is the simple diagram so here two electrons from carbon and four electrons from oxygen totally six electrons so those six electrons paired like this so three Four, five, six. So this is the pi two p x orbital, pi two p y orbital. So here it is the sigma two p x orbital. So this is the pi star orbital. So in generally, so highest occupied orbital is homo. So homo is a sigma orbital. Homo is a sigma two p x orbital. Okay. Now the next unoccupied orbital that is nothing but lumo. So the lumo is simply pi star orbital. okay so in previous csir question metal carbonyls are carbonyl both homo and lumo sir whether it is a zeroed or unzeroed now we know that very simple notation sigma sigma star pi pi star so sigma is the zeroed sigma star is the unzeroed pi is the unzeroed and pi star is the zeroed this is from like a molecular orbital theory okay so this this data from the molecular orbital theory now so then based on that sigma is the zeroed orbital so that is the symmetrical pi star is also zeroed so in both uh, like in carbonyl structure in metal carbonyls so in carbonyl uh, like a molecular orbital diagram both homo and lumo are zeroed zeroed moiety that is the symmetrical moiety so it is the unsymmetrical molecular orbital diagram it is lesser than fourth in alkyl system so this is the co okay this is the basic introduction of co again one more thing is so co it has it act as the pi acceptor ligand like, whenever so the metal it having the like a uh, hexa coordinated system not only hexa so it is the like plenty of uh, co ligands are surrounded by the metal atom so those ligands donates their pair of electrons towards the metal atom so then here metal having the lesser the size metal as the lesser the size and it receiving the more number of electrons from the like a uh, carbonyls from carbonyls ligands so then here metal has the like a uh, most more electronic cloud metal it bears the more electronic cloud that was the time it returnly send their electrons towards the like a carbonyl atom so this is called synergistic effect or back bonding effect which is also explained in the last class video last video okay so this is the back bonding or synergistic effect synergistic effect so this synergistic synergistic effect uh, which uh, uh, which affects the like a carbonyl stretching frequency in different different cases okay so in generally uh, like a stretching frequency of carbonyl uh, like a general carbonyl the stretching frequency of ir is like simply 2143 cm inverse 2143 Centimeter inverse. So, but in case of uh, like uh, any other factors, whether it is the complex is positive complex or it contains with uh, negative uh, negative ligands, whatever the like uh, sigma donor ligands or pi acceptor ligands. So, based on the like uh, adjacent criteria, adjacent nature as well as the charge on the complex. Uh, so, different different kinds of uh, 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 different different kinds of aspect, uh, the carbonyl stretching frequency is varied. Sometimes, uh, so the carbonyl stretching frequency it is appears at eighteen twenty. Sometimes it is seventeen seventy five. Sometimes it is a, uh, like a 22120 okay based on the different different criteria so the carbonyl stretching frequency was varied based on only back bonding so it is affected on synergistic effect okay so with the help of synergistic effect uh, so the carbonyl stretching frequency is varied okay so those those variations are discussed in this class i think it is clear okay so now we are going to deal with uh, so now the variation of carbonyl stretching frequency in metal carbonyl on the basis of a synergistic effect now let's move on to the topic okay 
So before going to the topic, now I'll give the very simple uh, data from the carbonyl stretching frequency. So this is the carbonyl, simple carbonyl. So the IR stretching frequency is 2143 centimeter inverse. 2143 centimeter inverse. Now whenever it is combined with one metal comp, one metal, one metal. So the range of uh, IR stretching frequency is 2120 to 1850 centimeter inverse. 1850 centimeter inverse. So whenever the same carbonyl which is connected to the two metals. So the range is like 18, like uh, 1862 or 1852, 1730. So the range is like that, 1730 to 1860, approximately. So whenever same the carbonyl which is connected through the three metals, that means here the bridge ligand ca character is mu three. So here mu two. Okay, that, that is the like a representation of a bridge ligands. Okay, so in case of mu three, so the range is like a 1732 or 17, uh, 1700 to 1600. So approximately uh, several books are given the like a, a small variation of the data. Okay, so this is 730 to 1600. So this is the original data of exact data of like a carbonyl stretching frequencies of IR spectroscopy. Carbonyl stretching frequency of IR spectroscopy. Sometimes uh, the same carbonyl which is connected with uh, like Lewis acids. Okay, so now uh, Lewis bases it, co it combined with uh, these kind of coordinate covalent bond. So it is uh, more than the 2143 that is approximately it is 2200 centimeter inverse. So this is the overall data regarding to the carbonyl stretching frequency. I think it is clear. Okay, now let's move on to the very basic concept of IR spectroscopy, how it is affected by the synergistic. Okay, now, so generally from the IR spectroscopy, we know that formula mu bar is equal to 1 by 2 pi c into square root of k by mu. So this is the formula from the like Hooke's law. Okay, now we'll get the formula from the Hooke's law for two springs. Okay, so whenever uh, the two, sp uh, like two balls connected like at the spring manner. So this is the formula for Hooke's law. So based on the Hooke's law, so new bar is nothing but a stretching frequency that is in the form of, a, uh, that is in the like centimeter inverse. So the units of centimeter inverse. Now the new bar is directly proportional to the K. So here K is equal to force constant. K is equal to force constant. So again, the mu bar is inversely proportional to the like a uh, square root of mu. So mu is equal to reduced mass. Mu is equal to reduced mass. Okay. So the reduced mass is nothing but uh, mu is equal to m1 m2 by two atoms. Like uh, so, this is the formula for the two balls which are connected through a spring-like manner. So that the spring assumed as uh, like a bond in a uh, like a general uh, general chemistry. Okay. So m1 m2 mass of the uh, first atom and mass of the second atom by so m1 plus m2. So this is the mu value. This is the mu value. Very simple thing. Okay. So, so from the data from the data of IR. Simply from the like basic introduction of IR, so the stretching frequency is directly proportional to the force constant and inversely proportional to the mass. Okay, so mainly the force constant which is helpful for uh, predicting the those uh, metal carbonyl stretching frequency. So generally, force constant is directly proportional to the bond strength. We know that bond strength is directly proportional to the bond order. Okay, again bond order is inversely proportional to the bond length. Inversely proportional to the bond length so that means so uh, force constant directly proportional to the bond strength bond strength directly proportional to the bond order bond order inversely proportional to the bond length so overall force constant is directly proportional to the stretching frequency a simple relation a single relation for the total IR spectroscopy okay simple relation so the force constant it, which is directly proportional to the stretching frequency. So then what we conclude, so if bond strength increases, stretching frequency increases, bond order increases, stretching frequency increases, bond length increases, stretching frequency decreases. That is only difference, okay? So if any like a carbon oxide bond is increased, then stretching frequency decreases. If bond oxygen, uh, uh, like uh, order, that means a uh, bond, a uh, carbon oxygen bond length is uh, suppressed, then stretching frequency increases. So this is the basic introduction data of uh, IR spectroscopy. Okay, now, so some of the factors which helps to predict the, like uh, those CO stretching frequencies, okay, Th those variation of CO stretching frequencies. Now, let's discuss those factors. So, this is very important uh, literature of CSAR net and in the prospect of CSAR net and uh, gate examination, okay. So, don't miss it. Okay, 
So now we know that back bonding, so the, uh, the nature of back bonding that is nothing but a synergistic. So in case of back bonding, now what will happen? So let's imagine. So this is the metal carbonate. So this is the simple carbonate. So this is the like a sigma donation of carbonyl to metal. Okay, so whenever metal which is uh, which is having the like a uh, more electron density from the like all the surrounding ligands, so then it returns into to the el electrons to carbonates to carbonates. Now what will happen? So metal single bond nature it becomes metal double bond nature. Okay, now here simply so here bond order is equal to one. So now in case a bond order is equal to two. So here carbonyl bond order is equal to three. So here bond order is equal to 2. Okay. Now we know that the basic relation. So stretching frequency is directly proportional to the bond order. We know that from the like basic definition of the previous one. So stretching frequency directly proportional to the bond order. Very simple one. So here bond order increases. Then automatically. So after the back bonding. After back bonding. Okay, so the metal carbon stretching frequency, the stretching frequency of a metal carbon, simply it is represented like this. So that indicates a metal carbon stretching frequency. So metal carbon stretching frequency increases. Are you clear? Why? Because so here bond order increases from 1 to 2. So very simple, a very simple thing. Okay, so after the back bond formation, so the single bond of a metal carbon, it increases like a metal carbon double bonds. So it, it has the like a metal carbon double bond nature. So that means, so if metal carbon double bond nature is increased so then metal carbon is a uh, bond length is a shorter so if bond length is a shorter then automatically bond is a stronger bond so then it is automatically stronger bond that means it is more strengthened bond so the bond strength is more then automatically force constant is more so finally stretching frequency is more so metal carbon stretching frequency increases but uh, so our goal is carbonyl stretching frequency. So the metal carbon stretching frequency increases at the same time. So carbon oxygen bond order suppressed. That means bond order decreased. If bond order decreased, automatically stretching frequency also decreased. Okay. So if bond order decreased, so like a stretching frequency of carbonyl decreases. So stretching frequency of carbonyls decreases. Are you clear? Okay, so the result of a back bonding, metal carbon stretching frequency increases and the carbon, carbonyl carbon oxygen stretching frequency is decreases. So finally, what we conclude? So presence of back bonding, carbonyl stretching frequency decreases. No doubt. So the presence of back bonding, carbonyl stretching frequency is suppressed. Okay, so this is the very simple thing. Okay, so back bonding decreases the carbonyl stretching frequency. Single statement. Back bonding decreases the carbonyl stretching frequency. Now, some factors which are uh, pred which are helpful to uh, predict the those variation in carbonyl stretching frequency. Now, let's move on to the factors which are influences on carbonyl stretching frequency. So, the first factor, the first factor, Simply first factor number one, so that is the charge on complex. Charge on complex. So simply, so some of the molecules, this is the metal carbonate. So the number is not represented. So let, let's assume. So if metal carbonate is having the positive charge, some of the metal systems, metal carbonates, it is a neutral compound. Some of the case, metal carbonyl is the like a negative one. So final thing is, so the final conclusion is better, okay? So now, if you know the concept, so the final conclusion is very easier. So if you, uh, like, by hand the final conclusion, so that is not useful for the competitive exams, okay? So this is better way to understand the concept of, uh, like, those factors that is very helpful for predicting the, those carbonyl stretching frequencies, okay? So finally, I'll, I'll explain some of the problems. So that was the time. If you, uh, without uh, my explanation, you, you answered the, those questions, that means, you, you will learn the something from the topic okay so you can uh, listen the listen carefully so this is very simple concepts okay now here mcox positive charge neutral charge negative charge so in case of uh, like a metal carbonyl like this is the metal carbonyl so here metal it has the like more uh, more, more electronic that represented as a uh, like an electronic cloud so this is the vacant orbital that is the pi accepting ligands so pi accepting 
legais. Okay, now so metal negative charge. So that means uh, here negative charge, formal negative charge on metal increases. Are you clear? So positive charge. That means uh, here deficiency of electrons. So if met metal has the deficiency of its electron, that means so metal it having the lesser number of electrons. Uh, uh, just to summarize the simple thing. So if uh, this metal having the six electrons, let uh, let's assume. But in case of negatives, it is more than six. Uh, that means uh, twelve electrons or twenty electrons are there. So the more electrons are there, so more electrons is is ready to participate. Or it it participates the more synergistic effect or more back bonding effect. So if more number of electrons are there, that means uh, so this is the uh, like metal has the lesser the size, but it bears with more number of electrons then more back bonding takes place so here yeah, so strong back bonding is observed strong back bonding is observed so here so itself it is a deficient why because so the positive charge indicates electronically deficient so if it is uh, electronically deficient then what we observed so that means uh, the back bonding is a back bonding nature is the lesson back, bo back bonding nature is suppressed so then we observed uh, so very weak back bonding very weak back bonding so here neutral complexes uh, itself it indicates uh, like a weak back bonding so the negatives is more back bondings weak back bonding weak back bonding now we know that the like a, a back bonding in H, back bonding relation with ir spectroscopy so the back bonding decreases the stretching frequency back bonding decreases the stretching frequency so let's uh, uh, let's represent like e1 2 3 okay so third one is the negative charge more back bonding so strong back bonding. If it is more back bonding, then carbonyl stretching frequency is suppressed according to the previous concept. Okay. So then it is the least carbonyl stretching frequency. So now here, very, very weak back bonding. That means uh, carbon carbon oxygen triple bond is retained. Carbon oxygen triple bond is if carbon oxygen triple bond is retained, that means uh, the stretching frequency is enhanced. Stretching frequency, so the automatically it is more. So then, in presence of like positive charged complexes, so the more carbonyl stretching frequency. Just absorb these things. Whether they are asking about a metal carbon or carbonyl, so here only carbonyl we are discussing about a carbonyl. So this is the like medium value, okay. So then, so what is the like order of uh, carbonyl stretching frequency in case of uh, positively charged complex and negatively charged complex? A uh, simple thing is like a uh, positive one is more greater than that of the second one. Third is the negative. So the negative charge on the complex decreases the IR stretching frequency and the positive charge on the complex increases the IR stretching frequency. Very simple one. I think the uh, concept is very clear. Okay. So the positive charge, lesser back bonding, mo more stretching frequency. Negative charge, more back bonding, lesser stretching frequency. Simple conclusion. No doubt. So positive charge, lesser, uh, we, strong back bonding, sorry. Uh, positive charge, lesser back bonding, more stretching frequency. Negative charge, strong back bonding, lesser stretching frequency. Okay. Now uh, let's observe the uh, some of the examples. Very simple examples. Okay. So titanium CO six times, vanadium CO six times, chromium CO six times. Manganese CO6 times, iron CO6 times. So minus 2, minus 0, plus 1, plus 2. Okay, so that is the like a charge on the complex. So all are the hexa coordinated system, but metals are different as well as charge is different. So the more negative charge, so lesser one. So it is observed like a 1750. So then, like it is also negative charge, but it is a uh, lesser negative than that of the first one. That means uh, lesser the negative, more stretching frequency. So it is observed 1860. So this is the neutral compound. So neutral compound, it is very closer to the 2000. So here 2100, 2200. Okay, so then it, it clearly explains uh, the more positive charge, more stretching frequency, more negative charge, less stretching frequency, less stretching frequency. So this is the first factor. Now let's let's have looked out uh, some of the second factor. Now let's look out second factor.
Okay, so now the second factor, number of CO ligands, number of CO ligands. So very simple thing. So now if number of CO ligands increases, now what will, what will happen in case of uh, carbonyl stretching frequency? So if number of CO ligands, now go, so the first system like NiCO4, let's imagine, so FeCO5 and uh, like, uh, sorry, FeCO5 and chromium CO6. Let's imagine. So here the coordination number of carbonyl ligands is more. So 4 to 5, 5 to 6. That is increased uh, stepwise manner. Okay. So the if nickel, it is surrounded by the four carbonyls. It is surrounded by the four carbonyls. So that means so the more number of, uh, like a uh, more number of carbonyls are present, uh, then it sends the their electrons towards the metal atom. So here formal negative charges increases. Formal negative charge. Okay, so four, uh, four, four metals, four carbonyls are there. So now here five carbonyls are there. Five carbonyls means here it is more formal negative charge, more formal negative charge. So here six metals, it's like uh, six carbonyls are there. That indicates here more and more formal, formal negative charge, more and more formal negative charge. So if more formal negative charge is observed. If more parmal negative charge is absorbed, so then it is uh, then it is readily possible to the back bonding. So here we observed more negative charge, so then it is the more back bonding. That means a strong back bonding. Strong back bonding. If in case it is the strong back bonding, lesser stretching frequency, lesser stretching frequency. So if it is the lesser stretching frequency, so that indicates so sorry. So if more back bonding, lesser stretching frequency. Here less back less back bonding more stretching frequency more stretching frequency okay i think it is clear okay so for example so here it is the 2157 2134 so the chromium is 1957 so that are approximate values so that means uh, so less uh, the less number of carbonyl ligands uh, more stretching frequency more number of carbonyl ligands uh, so that leads to the more back bonding that uh, finally uh, lesses the carbonyl stretching frequency. This is the second factor. Now, let's discuss the third one. So that is the nature uh, nature of adjacent ligands. That means the nature of uh, surrounding ligands. Okay, now the third factor. So that is nothing but a nature of ligand. Nature of ligand so simply some of the metal like this is the metal carbonate so we are discussing about ad like a adjacent complex not the carbonate so the, we are uh, the, our concept is carbonyl stretching frequency so then if uh, uh, like other ligand is there like uh, for example platinum cl4 so the, nothing is matter why because there is no carbonyl stretching frequency we are not discussing about those those type of complexes why because so here carbonyls if metal carbonyls along with some other ligands, whether it is a sigma donor ligand or a pi acceptor ligand. So those kind of ligands are presented in the metal carbonyl system. So what will happen? What will happen? That is the question mark. So now we are discussing about uh, those kind of complexes. If metal carbonyls shared with some other ligands, so that if uh, that other ligand, let's assume, so here it is the sigma donor ligand. So let's assume, so X is the sigma donor ligand. So so simple thing. So now again, the metal carbonyl, same thing, metal carbonyl. So here it is the other one is the pi acceptor ligand. So two, two things. That is the pi acceptor means minus i. So sigma donor means plus i. So simply donating groups with trying groups. That is the simple case. So now what will happen in presence of donating groups as well as with trying groups? So if uh, stretching frequency either increased or decreased, we don't know. Now let's uh, look down uh, so those things. Okay. So if, if uh, sigma donor ligand is there. So that means uh, it sends the electron cloud. It sends the electrons to the metal atom. So then, okay, now simply I'll write the simple, uh, like a few points. Presence of donor ligand. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's observe. So uh, the X is the donating group. That means uh, it sends the electrons to the metal atom. So then metal has the electronically rich. Okay, then metal has more electrons. That means uh, more electronic load or electronically rich. Metal has electronically rich. So if metal has electronically rich, if metal is electronically rich, so then automatically more pi back bonding is observed. More pi back bonding is observed. 
Are you clear? So if more electronic, that means metal is electronically rich. That means metal electron cloud is more than automatically more pi bonding is observed. If more pi bonding is observed, so then metal carbon stretching frequency increases. Metal carbonyl, metal carbonyl stretching frequency decreases. Very clear. Okay, metal carbon stretching frequency increases. Metal carbonyl simply, so the carbonyl stretching frequency decreases in presence of sigma donor ligands. Now the same thing, so here Y is the pi acceptor ligand. So that means, uh, so if metal has having the, itself it having this some electron cloud. Okay, so then pi, uh, that Y is the pi accepting ligand. Y is the pi accepting ligand. So the role of Y is, it accepts the pi electrons from the metal carbon, metal system. Okay, so then automatically these electrons, sh these electrons are shared to the, uh, shared to the Y. Okay, so then automatically it is electronically deficient. So, if, if the less electronic cloud that uh, cannot participate the more back bonding, that gives the like very weak back bonding, very weak back bonding. So, now, so, so let's write the same points, presence of uh, pi acceptor ligand. So, electronically metal has the, metal has electronically deficient. So, if metal is electronically deficient, now what will happen? So, weak pi bonding is observed, weak pi pi back bonding back pi bonding original representation weak back pi bonding is observed so then automatically so metal carbonyl metal carbon stretching frequency decreases so then metal carbonyl stretching frequency increases metal carbonyl stretching frequency increases i hope it is very clear okay so the presence of donor ligand Metal carbonyl, final our conclusion is carbonyl. So the carbonyl stretching frequency decreases. So the presence of pi acceptor ligands, carbonyl stretching frequency increases. That is the conclusion. So electron withdrawing groups, electron withdrawing groups increases the carbonyl stretching frequency. Increases carbonyl stretching frequency. So electron donating groups decreases carbonyl stretching frequency so this is the like a summary of the nature of ligand i think it is clear so three factors very clear cut information regarding to the so these three factors now let's discuss the some of the series of pi accepting uh, pi accepting liability okay so many of the previous years, uh, questions came from the concept that's why i'll uh, stretch uh, stressed out the those concept very deeply Okay, so now let's look out uh, like uh, some of the others. I think it is clear. So, donor ligands decreases the carbonyl searching frequency. Acceptor ligands increases the carbonyl searching frequency. So, the everything is uh, interlinked. Everything is uh, intermutual. Okay, now let's look out uh, some of the others, series of others. Okay, so some of the pi accepting ability of uh, different uh, C triple bond N as well as an normal phosphine ligands also. Okay, now pi accepting ability. So if more pi accepting ability, that means more electronic withdrawing group. So if more electronic withdrawing group, automatically stretching frequency of carbonyl is more. So simply here it is the NO plus is greater than that of the carbon selenium. So here it is the CSE. Then carbon sulfide that means carbon uh, carbon oxygen triple uh, triple bond like manner okay then carbon oxygen co is the triple bond cs triple bond cse same family okay so this is the no plus cse cs co so then pf3 so the, that that one is the pf3 so then like a uh, n sorry c triple bond n r then pcl3 then pcl3 so then ASOR taken thrice, ASOR taken thrice, then after like a phosphorus, O phenyl or O phenyls are OR taken thrice, OR taken thrice, then PR3 taken thrice, so then RCM. So this is the pi accepting ability. So this is the pi accepting ability. So if any system, if metal carbonyl, like this is the metal carbonyl, here it having the NO plus. So NO plus is the like a a linear one so NO minus is the bent one okay so NO plus so then other hand a metal carbonyl it having the like some x number it having the PR3 
So among these two, among these two, which one has the more stretching frequency? More stretching frequency. So which carbonyl which has the more stretching frequency? So this is the more pi accepting ability. That means a more electron withdrawing group. Electron withdrawing group. So this is the less electronic withdrawing group. This is almost alkyl groups are the like uh, this is the like donating groups. Less electron withdrawing groups. Okay. So if it is more electron withdrawing group, uh, so the presence of more electron withdrawing group that increases the carbonyl stretching frequency. So the presence of the sigma donor ligands uh, that decreases the carbonyl stretching frequency. Then automatically this is the order. Okay, so based on the series, we can easily predict the those carbonyl stretching in the order. Okay, so many of these CSI questions are came from the, the simple concept. These simple concept. Now sometimes, okay, so some phosphine ligands also has the different order. So some phosphine, phosphine ligands, uh, uh, pi accepting ability, pi accepting ability. Okay, now. So simply, so PF3 is, has more pi, pi accepting ability. So then automatically PCL3, PF3, PCL3, then PO phenyl taken thrice, then POR taken thrice. O phenyl means uh, aromatic phenoxy groups. Now here OR means alkoxy groups. So then PPH3, P phenyls, so triphenyl phosphines. So then P methyl taken thrice, P ethyl taken thrice. PCY taken thrice. PCY3. Here CY that is a cyclohexyl group. So phosphorus, it is the cyclohexyl group. So three cyclohexyls are there. Okay, so this is the PCY3 ligand. PCY3 ligand. Okay, so this is the simplest representation of a PCY3. So here it is the phosphine ligands, pi accepting ability. So the whenever the metal carbonyl is having the PF3 that is the more stretching frequency, so PCY3 is the lesser stretching frequency. So quite a, quite a opposite, a sigma donor ligands. So the quite opposite, that means PCY3 is greater than P ethyl taken thrice. So the which is greater than that of the P methyl taken thrice. So P phenyl taken thrice, P O R taken thrice, so P O phenyl taken thrice. So then PCL3 were taken twice, PF3 taken twice. So this is the simple order. Again, some other order is also there. Some of the phosphine halides. So halide phosphine ligands. So that means the PX3 ligand. So PF3 is more stretching frequency than that of the more pi accepting ability. So then that of the PCL3. So like a PBR3, PI3. So this is the order, another order. Okay, so I think so based on these these three orders, we can easily predict the those. Uh, like a uh, IR stretching frequency based on the synergistic effect, based on the synergistic effect. So these three are the very simple factors which are influences on the carbonyl stretching frequency through the synergistic effect. I think it is very clear. Okay. Now I'll give you some of the example for sake of your uh, practice as well as uh, uh, your knowledge. Okay. Now I'll give you some of the example. So uh, let's observe what what is the like appropriate answers. Okay. Okay, now these are the simple problems regarding our topic. So before going to the uh, solving the problems, uh, now we have to revise the like those three factors. So the first factor there is nothing but a charge on the complex. So more positive charge, more stretching frequency. One is uh, one is enough. So if you remember the two things, you can get definitely you will be confused. Okay, so that's why if more positive charge, more stretching frequency. Why? Because it is the less of weak bonding. That's why it is more stretching frequency. Now the second case. So if uh, coordination num like uh, number of carbonyls increases, stretching frequency decreases. That's enough. Third one. So presence of donating groups, carbonyl stretching frequency decreases, metal carbon stretching frequency increases. In presence of withdrawing groups, carbonyl stretching frequency increases, metal carbon stretching frequency decreases. So this is the uh, like uh, three factors which are helpful to predict the IR stretching frequency based on the synergistic effect. Now, uh, so just uh, looked out the some of the problems. Okay. So the first question. So in which of the following has more Carbonyl stretching frequency, more carbonyl stretching frequency. They are given the four options. So one is the FeCO4, PF3, PMU3, PEthyl3, PMOMU3. So based on the series, so if if it is a pi accepting ligand, then more stretching frequency, or a sigma donor ligand, less stretching frequency. Okay. So among the four, so PF3 is the more more pi accepting ability. So this is direct question, more pi accepting ability. Now the second question. So in which of the following is more 
metal carbon stretching frequency just observed so what they are given metal carbon stretching frequency so if metal carbon stretching frequency is the other word so lesser if if they are asking about more metal carbon stretching frequency that is nothing but less carbonyl stretching frequency it's a very simple manner okay so here they are given the pme3 pcl3 pph3 ppf3 so now just arrange the, those are done ppf3 pcl3 pph3 so pme3 based on the pi accepting Okay, if more pi accepting, more stretching frequency, more carbonyl. Okay, so the more carbonyl, less metal carbon. So the like a uh, less pi accepting ability, less carbonyl, more metal carbon, more metal carbon. So the less carbon that is nothing but PME3. So this is the second one. So second one option is option A. So now just match the following. So very simple things. Okay. So now here they are given the one is the positive complex, neutral complex, and negative complex. So the negative complex due to the back bonding, lesser value. So we know that the negative is the lesser value. So among these three, which one is lesser? So first one is lesser. So now positive is the more value. So among these three, which one is the more? So 2090 is the more. So then the remaining is simple one. Okay, now again the same the matching the following of uh, organometallic complex with a uh, stretching frequency in centimeter inverse. So now here they are given in the different kinds. Okay, so one is the like uh, here I think it is a minus one. So this is the minus two, minus one, NiCO4, CO. So we know that simply CO stretching frequency is 2143. So this is clear. So this is clear. So now more negative charge, more bad bonding. Lesser carbonyl stretching frequency. So they are given the carbonyl stretching frequencies only. Okay. So then FeCO4 more negative charge, very lesser stretching frequency. Among these three, so the lesser one is a 790, 1790. So then again, so this is the one is the neutral complex, another one is the negative complex. Negative is the lesser value. So among these two, so lesser value is 1890. So the remaining one is NaCO4 2060. So approximately 2057 in our examples. That is the closer values. Okay. So this is the way to solve the like uh, IGR stretching frequency related argonometallic complex problems. I think uh, it is very helpful for you guys. I hope so. In CSIR exam, argonometallic complex uh, chapter is very easier. Okay. So when you follow my total content of the total series of videos, definitely you will get the more than 20 to 25 marks. So don't worry about so, like, don't fear about argonometallic complexes. Okay. So, I think it is uh, very helpful. Now, I'll give the very uh, like a full confidence to you. Okay. So, argonometallic is the score booster topic uh, from inorganic chemistry in, in the competitive exams like a CSR and gate examination. Okay, so it is very helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching.